we call that a power series is a series with a variable in it. In this example, the C sub n and the A are supposed to be real numbers that are held constant. So the only variable is x. That's the only place where I can plug in different values at different times. This video explores the question of for what values of the variable x does the power series converge, and for what values of x does it diverge? Let's look at a few examples. First, for what values of x does this power series converge? There's one value of x that I know for sure it converges for. Please pause the video for a moment and try to guess which value of x I'm thinking of. The series definitely converges when x equals 3. If I expand out the first few terms of the series, I get this expression, then plugging in 3 for x, all of my terms vanish to 0 except for my constant term of 1. So at x equals 3, the series converges to its constant term. And in fact, this is true of any power series. All power series converge at their center. But let's see what other values of x it converges for. Although we have many tests for convergence in our toolkit, the ratio test is usually the best test to use to determine where a power series converges. For the ratio test, we need to take the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms. For our example, this is n plus 1 factorial times x minus 3 to the n plus 1 divided by n factorial times x minus 3 to the n. Let's simplify by canceling things. And we get n plus 1 times x minus 3. Now x minus 3 is some number, and I'll assume it's a non-zero number, since I already dealt with the case when x equals 3. So I have a non-zero number that stays fixed as n goes to infinity times a number that's going to infinity. So the absolute value of the product has to go to infinity, no matter what x value we have, other than the x value of 3. The ratio test says that if this limit is infinity, the series diverges. Therefore, the power series diverges for all values of x except for 3. The only place where it converges is at the center of 3. In this next example, the center of the series is negative 4. So the series definitely converges when x equals negative 4. Let's use the ratio test to figure out what other values of x make it converge. So we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. This works out to the limit of the absolute value of negative 2 to the n plus 1 times x plus 4 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial all over negative 2 to the n x plus 4 to the n over n factorial. Let's simplify by flipping and multiplying and rearranging a little. After canceling, we get the limit of the absolute value of negative 2 times x plus 4 divided by n plus 1. The numerator of this expression doesn't depend on an n, so it stays fixed as n goes to infinity but the denominator goes to infinity. Therefore, we're dividing some fixed constant by larger and larger numbers, and so this limit is equal to zero. Once again, the limit doesn't depend on x's value. It's always zero, no matter what x is. So by the ratio test, since zero is less than one, the series converges for all values of x. Here's our third and last example. In this example, it's a little trickier to figure out what the center is. One thing we can do is to rewrite the series in a more standard form by factoring out the negative 5. Then we get negative 5 times x minus 2 fifths all raised to the nth power over n. I can rewrite this again as negative 5 to the n 
times x minus 2 fifths to the n over n. And in this more standard form, it's easy to recognize that the center is 2 fifths. Another way to find the center is just to figure out the value of x that makes terms go to 0. So in our case, if we want negative 5x plus 2 to equal 0, we need x to equal 2 fifths. And therefore, 2 fifths must be the center, like we found before. In any case, our series converges for x equals 2 fifths for sure. But it might converge for other values of x. So let's use the ratio test to find other values of x that make the series converge. We start off the same way as usual by taking a limit of a ratio of the n plus 1th and nth terms. And then we simplify by flipping and multiplying. And after canceling, we get the limit of negative 5x plus 2 times n over n plus 1. As n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1 goes to 1. And negative 5x plus 2 doesn't depend on n, so this final limit is just the absolute value of negative 5x plus 2. So by the ratio test, our series converges when this limit is less than 1. And it diverges when the limit is greater than 1. The ratio test is inconclusive when the absolute value of negative 5x plus 2 is exactly equal to 1, so we'll worry about that case later. Let's solve the first absolute value inequality. When the absolute value of something is less than 1, that means that the quantity inside the absolute value sign has to be between 1 and negative 1. So we can rewrite the absolute value inequality as negative 1 is less than negative 5x plus 2, which is less than 1. We can solve this for x by subtracting 2 and dividing by negative 5. Dividing by a negative number reverses the direction of the inequality signs. So we have that our series converges for these values of x. Now let's solve the second absolute value inequality, the one that tells us where the power series diverges. The series diverges when the absolute value of negative 5x plus 2 is greater than 1. When the absolute value of something is greater than 1, that means that whatever's inside the absolute value sign has to either be less than negative 1 or greater than 1. So we can replace our absolute value inequality with two inequalities, negative 5x plus 2 is less than negative 1, or negative 5x plus 2 is greater than 1. Let's solve these inequalities by subtracting 2 and dividing by negative 5, and similarly on the other side. So our series diverges when x is greater than 3 fifths or less than 1 fifth. That makes sense. It's kind of the opposite of where it converges because we are solving an absolute value inequality with the opposite inequality sign. Putting all this information together, we see that our series converges when x is between 1 fifth and 3 fifths and diverges on either side of this interval. We still don't know what happens when x is exactly equal to 1 fifth or exactly equal to 3 fifths since those values correspond to the case when the ratio test is inconclusive. So let's turn our attention to the x values of 1 fifth and 3 fifths next. Let me write down our original power series. It was the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 5x plus 2 to the n over n. If we want to know if this power series converges at x equals 1 fifth, let's just plug in x equals 1 fifth. This simplifies 
to the sum of 1 to the n over n, which is just the regular harmonic series, which diverges. If we plug in x equals 3 fifths, we get this series, which simplifies to the alternating harmonic series. So it converges. So now we know that the series converges when x equals 3 fifths and diverges when x equals 1 fifth. And our final answer is that the power series converges on the interval from 1 fifth to 3 fifths where we use an open bracket to denote that we exclude the endpoint 1 fifth because the series diverges there. And the closed bracket, square bracket, means that we include the endpoint of 3 fifths where the series does converge. I want to make one more observation before we leave this example. Notice that the midpoint of this interval is the number 2 fifths. Remember at the beginning of the problem we calculated the center of the power series and it was also 2 fifths. We'll see in a moment that this is no coincidence. In fact, the interval of convergence is always centered at the center of the power series. And we could in fact describe the interior of this interval of convergence as the x values for which x minus that center is less than one fifth. That is, all x values within a distance of one fifth from the interval center. We've seen three examples of power series, and each one converged in a very different way. In general, it turns out that there are only these three different types of convergence that we've already seen. It's possible, like we saw in the first example, that a series might converge only at its center. It's also possible that a power series could converge for all values of x. This is what happened in our second example. But if neither of these two cases hold, then the only other possibility is that there exists a number r such that our series converges any time we're within r units from the center A. And the power series diverges for any x values that are more than r units from the center A. In symbols, I can write there exists a number r such that the power series converges when the absolute value of x minus a is less than r and diverges when the absolute value of x minus a is greater than r, since the absolute value of x minus a represents the distance between x and a. This was the situation we saw in our third example. Now in the first case, we say that the radius of convergence of the power series is zero. In the second example, we say the radius of convergence is infinity. And in the third example, we say the radius of convergence is r, since r represents the distance from the center of the interval, sort of like the radius of a circle represents the circle's distance from the center. Now the interval of convergence is the interval of all x values for which the power series converges. So in our first situation, the interval of convergence is just the number a. It's not really an interval, just a single number, but we call it the interval of convergence anyway. In the second situation, our interval of convergence is the interval from negative infinity to infinity. And then the third situation, the interval of convergence includes this entire interval here that extends from the number a minus r to the number a plus r. So our interval could be the open interval a minus r to a plus r but it could also include one or more endpoints. So it could be the closed interval, or it could just include the left endpoint, or just the right endpoint. In this video, I worked out some examples using the ratio test 
to figure out what x values make a power series converge. I also stated the fact that there are only three options for convergence of a power series. Convergence at the center only, convergence for all real numbers, and convergence on some finite interval centered at the center of the power series.